In this lecture, we will discuss about application of hyperconjugation. Concept of hyperconjugation is used to decide a stability of carbocation. Let us consider first methyl carbocation. Second, we can replace one hydrogen with CH3. Then we can replace two hydrogen with CH3. And then we can replace three hydrogen with CH3. This carbocation carbon is attached to three carbon. So this is called tertiary carbocation. In this case carbon is attached to two carbon. So this is called secondary carbocation or two degree carbocation. This one is one degree carbocation. This one is simply called methyl carbocation. Now if you see carbocation, let us say one degree carbocation. We can write hyperconjugating a structure. So there are three hyperconjugating structures are possible. We can remove this bond, we can remove this carbon hydrogen bond, we can remove this carbon hydrogen bond. So there are three hyperconjugating structures are possible. Yes, we can also break this carbon hydrogen bond. So we have three hyperconjugable hydrogen. This one is one, two, three. And we have three hyperconjugating structure. So three hyperconjugating structure. Three hyperconjugable hydrogen. So you see, if I have more number of hyperconjugating a structure, electron dispersal will be more. That is, the stability of carbocation is directly related to number of hyperconjugable hydrogen. If I have more number of hyperconjugable hydrogen, this positive charge will get minimized more. So stability of carbocation. is directly proportional to number of hyperconjugable hydrogen. That is hydrogen that is attached to carbon that is adjacent to the plus charge. That is carbon is also called alpha carbon. So you see in case of one degree, we have three alpha hydrogen or three hyperconjugable hydrogen. In case of two degree, we have three plus three, six hyperconjugable hydrogen. In case of three, we have tertiary, we have three plus three plus three, nine hyperconjugable hydrogen. In case of methyl, we does not have any hyperconjugable hydrogen. So three degree carbocation will be most stable. So three degree is more stable than two degree is more stable than one degree and this is more stable than methyl carbocation. Now let us do one exercise. If I want a stability of this carbocation, let us call this is one. Let us call this is two. 
then we have this one is 3 this one is 4 so you have to find which carbocation is most stable once again answer will be lie in the fact number of hyperconjugable hydrogen so in this case carbocation has 3 alpha hydrogen or 3 hyperconjugable hydrogen in this case this carbocation has 2 alpha hydrogen in this case we have 1 alpha hydrogen in this case we have no alpha hydrogen so in this case no hyperconjugable hydrogen so we can say one is most stable then two because the stability directly related to hyperconjugable hydrogen hyperconjugation can also be used to decide a stability of radical RDI is same if you have more number of hydrogen that is in hyperconjugation radical will be more stable so this is a methyl radical let us consider next is one degree radical this carbon is attached to another carbon so this is one degree radical we can have two degree radical that is carbon is attached to two carbon so this is two degree radical similarly we can have a three degree radical carbon is attached to three carbon now if I write let us say one degree radical we can write three resonating structure or three hyper conjugating structure so we can remove one electron from here and one electron goes to hydrogen so we will have CH double bond CH similarly we can break this carbon hydrogen bond or we can break this carbon hydrogen bond so we have three hyperconjugating structure in this case and we have three alpha hydrogen or three hyperconjugating hydrogen hyperconjugable hydrogen we have three hyperconjugating structure so let us say in this case one degree radical we have three hyperconjugating hydrogen in this case we have six hyperconjugable hydrogen in this case we have nine hyperconjugable hydrogen in this case we have none of the hydrogen that is hyperconjugable so three degree radical will be more stable this is greater than two degree one degree and then methyl radical will be least stable hyperconjugation can also be used to decide a stability of alkene so let us say we have an alkene both sided we have hydrogen this kind of alkene is called non substituted alkene so non substituted alkene now if I remove one hydrogen and place an alkyl group let us say alkyl group is CH3 this kind of alkene is called mono substituted alkene if I remove two hydrogen and place a alkyl group I can remove these two hydrogen these two hydrogen or we can remove these two hydrogen so there are three possibility
so there are three di substituted alkene so these are di substituted alkene this one is called cis and this one is called trans similarly we can have a tri substituted alkene so this is a tri substituted alkene we can have a tetra substituted alkene now in case of alkene we can have hyperconjugation so you see if i have a carbon this carbon is alpha carbon hydrogen attached to the alpha carbon is hyperconjugable hydrogen and it participates in hyperconjugation so we can have three hyperconjugating structure for this molecule so we can break this carbon hydrogen bond similarly we can break this carbon hydrogen bond or we can break this carbon hydrogen bond so in this case now each carbon has a hydrogen so this has a hydrogen so we have three hyperconjugating structures so this is one this is second and this one is third so we have three hyperconjugable hydrogen three alpha hydrogen or three hyperconjugable hydrogen so we have three hyperconjugating structure if we have more hyperconjugating structure alkene will be more uh, stable so this means a uh, stability of alkene is directly proportional to number of hyperconjugable hydrogen that is more electron cloud dispersal if i have more hyperconjugable structures we will have more electron cloud dispersal and dispersal will always make alkene more stable so now you see in this case we have zero alpha hydrogen in this case we have three alpha hydrogen in case of di substituted we have 3 plus 3 6 alpha hydrogen tri substituted we have 3 3 9 3 3 plus 3 6 3 9 so we have 9 alpha hydrogen in this case we have 12 alpha hydrogen so we can say tetra will be the most stable alkene so tetra substituted most stable then we have tri then we will have di substituted then we will have mono substituted and then we will have non substituted alkene concept of hyperconjugation can also be used to decide bond length let us say for example we have this compound if i write hyperconjugating a structure so 
so we will have this let us call this carbon is carbon 1 this is carbon 2 this is carbon 3 now if you see in actual molecule we have carbon 1 and carbon 2 that is a perfect double bond but due to this hyperconjugation here we have a single bond so in actual molecule this bond will have some single bond character that is less than double bond character so we can say carbon 1 and carbon 2 bond will be longer normal carbon carbon double bond normal carbon carbon double bond similarly we can say this bond is single bond but due to hyperconjugation this has some double bond character so carbon 2 carbon 3 bond will have some double bond character that is we can say C2 C3 bond will be shorter than carbon carbon single bond similarly what this carbon hydrogen bond so this has some broken character so this carbon hydrogen bond is not a perfectly single bond it will has less character than single bond so carbon hydrogen bond is not a perfect single bond the carbon hydrogen bond length will be longer than normal carbon hydrogen bond so these are the base that is used to decide so what are the use of hyperconjugation first is to decide a stability of carbocation it can also be used to decide a stability of radical it can also be used to decide a stability of alkene and it can be finally used to decide bond length so hyperconjugation is important for these purpose